Hello, everybody. Uh, today is our November translator call, and I'm Aruna, and I am back from a, a long hiatus, and I'm taking over the role of TransFX admin from uh, Yevgeny. So we have a lot on the agenda. We have uh, several participants, uh, some of them are new. And um, so first item on the agenda, I think we'll just move to the first item is just getting a review of the current project. I just wanted to uh, let you know that I have um, updated the translator documentation. Um, it's not available on this, but um, I will try to make it um, available and it's official on the disk side. And there, so I just have updated, and we have three projects on TransFX. We have the main project, uh, this desktop, that's uh, translating the software. Then, um, so that project has over like around 10 or maybe a little more core languages. And then we have this website where we started translating certain pages, um, the landing page and in other important pages into several languages. And there's an overlap. So basically, since uh, the software is available in certain languages. We want to make sure that other information is available in those languages. So the website and, and then there's another um, project subtitle where um, some YouTube videos were um, translated into several languages. So um, regarding the, the this desktop, um, so we before I, I left, we had like, um, it was kind of not very formal, but um, the reason we have certain languages um, and that are basically given priority is that there, there are many reasons, but one of the reasons is uh, if, there, if there is a base, uh, if there is a market base uh, in those countries for those languages, or if there is a significant number of people who speak those languages. So um, the core languages, as far as I know, and please correct me for those who uh, have been uh, with this for during my absence. So it's English, oh, so it's German, Spanish, Portuguese, Russian, French, uh, Chinese, Mandarin, um, Thai, Vietnamese, um, Persian, and um, Let's see, uh, Thai Vietnamese version. Yeah, I think that's, and I think um, Japanese too, but I'm not sure. Do you know if Japanese is added to the, does anyone know if Japanese is part of the? Yeah, Japanese is added both on the, the program and the website. Okay, so Japanese. Any other languages that? Um, that sounds um, complete to me. So um, for the, so in the, for new uh, newcomers, it's good to join TransFX, this TransFX project. And um, so you can see there on the, uh, kind of among the languages, there are so many languages on TransFX, but these basically 11 languages are given priority and Portuguese includes uh, Brazilian and Portugal. And um, so uh, two uh, quite active translators who, who and uh, contributors in general, um, have been working on Chinese, traditional Chinese, and they um, raised a couple of, of questions. First of all, um, because it seems like traditional Chinese is kind of more encompassing in, in uh, Southeast Asia, um, and uh, they have done some work, and they would like to know if this is a language that should be core, and um, yeah, basically. Does anyone have any ideas or basically what we need to figure out? And I have spoken to Christoph um, just a, a, a few minutes ago. Uh, the, how we need to connect our translation activity to the actual use of the of the software in those countries. So I don't know, um, kind of whether we should gather some, I think that there was Google Analytics statistics, but kind of we need to figure out 
how uh, important it is to include a new language because it's important to have to focus on the completeness of each uh, language and on the quality and consistency. So in the translator documentation, uh, kind of, uh, Jenny and I pointed out that it's good to have uh, in each team a translator and a reviewer. So we need to make sure to, um, yeah, to have that. So does anyone have any suggestions or ideas um, for that? Yeah, well, I think there's two considerations. I think number one, we have to, like you said, make sure that there is a solid utility for the language. I mean, because we can have, and we've had people who speak a number of languages approach us and offer translating mm -hmm. because they can. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it's worthwhile to include the language in the software. Mm -hmm. So I think, I guess, uh, website metrics could be one way of determining which ones are yeah. useful or not. Um, but the other thing I think we need to take, under, take into consideration is maintenance and making sure that the person who, if there is a case to be made to include the language, that the person who does it uh, will be around or, or some, or, or there will be some uh, availability of resources, whether it's that person or another person, to keep that language updated. I don't think it's so much of a problem for the software. Um, I mean, it's still a consideration, but for the website, that's a huge consideration that we're uh, having issues with right now. We've had languages contributed, but major changes have been made to the website, but the translations have not been updated. So. That's that's a really good point. That's really important. Uh, by the way, I just wanted to mention uh, it's kind of meta. Uh, I think that we have only like 40 minutes, so maybe uh, we'll, we'll need to continue next uh, for our next call, like if we cut off, get cut off. So that's a really good point because I think then we have these 11 lang languages. We can maintain them. And uh, because I saw that there was also Czech, and I'm not sure uh, how much, I think there's only one person for Czech. And I'm not sure how much demand there is and how it's, it's great that people are very interested. It's, it's really great that you have it, but it becomes a little kind of unmanageable to have all these languages. We need to make sure, I think we need to make sure that there's consistent and uh, up to date translations across for the desktop and relevant information for the desktop. So maybe we should just, just maintain these 11 languages. We don't have any, we, we can just, uh, I will discuss more with um, the contributors who are interested in having traditional Chinese and see how it goes. Um, yeah. Uh, so for the websites then, um, there are fewer languages than the core languages. I don't think it's available in Thai. Well, in Persian, there's still a problem, right? Because we cannot, um, there's a right to left to right. Yeah, there's some, some issue with the, uh with it. I think Huey got it mostly done, but there were some lingering issues that, I mean, I don't have any ex expertise in this and he doesn't okay. either. So if anybody, yeah, yeah. so I, will, I guess we, we can make a yeah, call for anybody who, who is familiar with uh, Farsi to take a look at that PR and resolve the outstanding issues. Okay, cool. Uh, so then we can add, so do you, do you uh, guys think it's a good idea to have the website available uh, in all of these core languages? Then what that information? Yeah, I think it makes sense to have the website yeah. mirror the software. Yeah. Um, then, do you know when the next so the next release is coming up? I think there's supposed to be a code freeze today. So so uh, okay. the release should if testing goes yeah. well, then it should be next week the release. Yeah. So so this next, next week. Um, so Steve, then it's a good idea then. Uh, I think we focus first and foremost on translations, right? Uh, Christoph mentioned that uh, the translations that have not been reviewed are still available uh, at the, with each new release. So uh, for anyone who is uh, doing any translations, uh, please try to, um, if, if you have time to, uh, to uh, get as much of it translated as possible. Uh, focus more on the translations and then the reviews. Um, yeah, uh, ideally, of course, uh, performed by a separate person. But yeah, there are some cases 
where um, if the translator is really good, they can do both the translation and the review. So yeah, great. Then we'll do that. Um, and um, so maybe the website. Okay. So the documentation. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to add that maybe one thing we can like an action item per se to, to do after this call is to figure out what the top priority languages are. Just like list the top 10 or yeah. 11 just so that people know. Yeah, top priority and yeah, top priority. We have this already list, but we'll just maybe again just make sure add, I think I have added Japanese. So yeah, um, maybe even like it will be like German, Russian, Spanish, Portuguese, French, Chinese, Japanese. And then Persian, Thai, Vietnamese are a little bit on the lower priority because I don't think we have, we still have these issues and we don't have any, um, I think, I don't think we have a consistent translator for the entire Vietnamese. Uh, and then uh, several translators also asked about uh, what documentation we should um, provide because there have been a lot of changes, as you know. So Steve, would you like to, uh, Mention the work that you've been doing. And, yeah, it's, it's um, not because, very, yeah, it's not very much work. I think uh, you, you've 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 written a lot of good documentation, and uh, I actually spoke with Yevgeny shortly after you left about integrating it, and uh, he indicated that it was it was okay to integrate it. I just never did it. Uh, oh so. yeah, sorry. I meant I meant documentation uh, for the BISC website. So we have the. So, for instance, when you go, I wanted to talk about the BISC website. I, I think it was a little, uh, uh, we have this, uh, these languages. Is that, were you talking about the translator documentation? Oh, okay. Yeah, I was talking about the translator yeah, documentation. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, you can also use so, documentation yeah. for the website. Yes, because, uh, so for, you, you can see it's really great. UA has done a fantastic job. It looks really wonderful. And, uh, but there's a button where it's like uh, start, comment start, and then you press, and then there's it leads to uh, information in English. So we need to figure out what mm -hmm. relevant information we should pr pr uh, provide to people, to translators, uh, and ideally it will be up to date. It will be simple to understand because there's so many new concepts, and we need to make sure that the translators themselves understand these concepts. So they, they are able to translate them well. Yeah. And and you're talking about concepts on how to actually add a new translation to the website. No, uh, I meant like the actual con content. Like uh, we had uh, about trading protocols. So there were several uh, like oh. this documentation because we talked about it. We have we have tried to add that, but it seems like it's different format. And there's just so much text, and it's uh, maybe a yeah, little yeah, hard yeah. to translate it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So for that, for for doc, so docs.bisc.network, so the documentation website. Yes. Doc. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So or any relevant information. Yeah. 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 So that that has been tricky to to do translations for. Um, I'm in the process of talking to Chris. Uh, Chris Beams is one of the original. Well, he is the original maintainer of the documentation repository. Um, and we're talking about ways to, we just started talking about ways to make documentation a little bit more collaborative. Um, right now it's, it's maintained through the typical pull request workflow that we have for everything else in BISC. And uh, it's also just technically hard to integrate new uh, new languages because of the the way the tooling is for the the framework that we use to build the documentation website. Um, but basically, what I propose and what I'm thinking we'll talk more about in the coming days is to split documentation into two parts. The first part would be the typical the the conceptual stuff, like how does this how is this structured? Um, what are the principles that works that that it uses to to work? Uh, what, you know about the DAO. How does the DAO work? What are the different roles? All of that documentation that doesn't really relate to using BISC, but is important to have uh, to explain what BISC is and how it works. Have that in the documentation repository that we have right now, 
and then complement that with the second part, uh, what, I, what I'll call the knowledge base, which will have more practical how-to guides that people can use to actually understand how to use the software. And for this part of the documentation, what I'm thinking is this could be more collaborative, perhaps in a wiki style. You know, anybody can contribute to it, anybody can update it, and it'll, it'll, it, it will avoid that pull request workflow that we have right now that's a little bit limiting, uh, especially for people who aren't too technical. Um, and it will be more flexible so that people who want to add how-to guides in new languages or with, uh, with, with, uh, with, you know, to tailor to, to users who are in a particular region who use BISC in a certain way, will have the flexibility to do that because they won't necessarily be, they won't be directly translating something. They'll be making a guide as they want to make it for their region or for their users. So essentially what I'm saying is there's a possibility that docs as we have it right now will be split into two parts, uh, one of which will be much, much easier to translate. Okay, so do you think that uh, we can uh, wait until it's been done or do you think we can uh, provide some um, information for translators? Yeah, let's let's hold off. So I just so Chris and I just started talking last night and then um, this is part of the support initiative that we just kicked off last week. The knowledge base is a support thing. Um, and what I'm hoping to do is combine the documentation effort and the uh, the support effort uh, to, to make these two new documentation uh, tools. So yeah, let's wait until we have more certainty over how that's going to work out. Okay, uh, and then we can, I, I really like that because it's, uh, so conceptual will be, uh, it will be done by, by you and by other contributors who understand these concepts very well, maybe, I don't know, developers or maybe yeah. it's, it's mostly going to be you. And then how to, it depends, it's kind of more practical. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it will be, then it will be like, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, so regarding how, how to, I think how to, I think is more urgent because it's more practical. It's more because there are a lot of uh, changes that we need to make sure that people understand. People are not confused about mediator and arbitrator. So this this information maybe what we can do is that we can link like we can have kind of very uh, simple how to. Do you think that the the charts that the flow chart idea would be a good idea in this case for the house too or uh, yeah um, yeah it could be uh, I mean anybody uh, it's, it's free for anyone to use so if people think it's useful to put in the how-to guides then sure yeah uh, does anyone have any questions about uh, these uh, the big this new concept uh, and how what in what information would be useful to have for for users in different languages? So we're just to, for everyone on the call. We're we're gonna, we're talking about these new tools in uh, the docs channel on Keybase, and in the ticketing ticketing system ticketing dash system channel on Keybase. For any of you guys who if this piques your interest and. Uh, Check out the discussion. Sorry, I, I'm I'm confused. The because now because I uh, I was referring to the documentation the um, information that's available for the website, right? So that's that's the same thing, right? We're talking about yeah, sure. yeah, the documentation. Okay, right? cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, quick question. Uh, maybe also after the call, we can in part of the summary have a list of the channels that we should be members of, so that we don't miss uh, anything relating to the translation project so it seems like oh, not great. just a translation channel but these other channels for the ticketing and and the task yeah sure we can do that thank you just just so you know we have uh, Aruna we have about seven and a half minutes left okay I think that uh, maybe we can just uh, I'm not sure 
So is there anything that we want to talk about this particular topic? I mean, I don't know if it's, I just wanted to know other translators' opinions on what uh, kind of information we should have for people uh, in these different languages on the website. Um, Maybe that's something that we can have a continuous discussion and um, on key base also start talking about that. I think maybe some translators would also like to add to have some uh, input into how to or into that. So, um, so should I just yeah. move on to the next item on the agenda? Uh, it's the rate we have in the translator documentation. I will talk about this rate. Um, right now it's 0.07 um, cents per word for translation and 0.035 for review. But I think that for more complex languages like Chinese and Japanese, maybe it should be a little higher. And that's something that I can discuss with the translators themselves for those languages. But for the other languages we have th those rates, uh, let me know if you have any questions or concerns. And um, then for the uh, this web, um, kind of transfer of information procedure. I think Huey was involved, so I'm not sure, Steve, how much you know about it, but uh, Fabio, I think, is also, um, he mentioned something about creating a tutorial. I'm not sure if it refers to particular Chinese or to, to all the other languages. Uh, I don't understand the technical aspect of it, and I'm not sure uh, how much you has been involved in the last two months. Yeah, you know, Huey it's... hasn't really been around. I think what Fabio was was uh, well, he what he wrote up is uh, yeah a process on if you want to add a new language to the website, and this is how you do it. Uh, so it's okay, so the documentation a... that we really need. So there is a process like that. So Fabio and the, and this process has been uh, implemented, like has been uh, tried and it was successful. Yeah. So mm -hmm. his pull request has not been merged yet, but it probably will be today or tomorrow. So then I will talk more to Fabio and uh, Huey if he's still interested. I think he is because he was uh, asking about the um, the call. So yeah, I will follow up on that. Um, only I thing is, the only note, uh, mm -hmm. only note there is that the, the process might change a little bit. I think we want to, the, the, the current process is not super efficient. I was hoping to talk to somebody, I was hoping Huey would join uh, so that we could talk a little mm. bit more about how the strings are actually transferred to TransFX. Um, because, and it's important because if we want to get these strings updated in a more timely manner, then it's important that that process, that that, that that transfer happens quickly and efficiently and regularly. Uh, yes. So I think I uh, what I will do is I will follow up with Huey and maybe the three of us can have a, or the four of us can have a call separately. Okay, that'd be helpful. That. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Uh, so how much time do we have? It's just a few minutes, right? Four minutes and one second. <laughs> okay. So does anyone have any questions? Uh, any anything to discuss? Uh, uh, just if there's multiple people for the same language, is it first come first serve, or is it going to be split as a team effort, or or what's the best uh, process there? This is a really good question. I think it's just uh, first come first serve now. It's just more very like informal. People just do it, but I think that. Uh, ideally, it would be great if, for instance, like uh, one person does some part of translation and another person reviews that person's work. So that's like for quality, uh, just to make sure that, uh, and of course, it would be wonderful if people could work together. Uh, it's just because people are all over the world, it's maybe a little hard to coordinate. But uh, I think it would be wonderful uh, to have a more like a coherent, uh, team uh, of translators uh, and then maybe you can share ideas on what other um, because you will know your audience better so you can share more ideas on 
what would be useful, what information would be useful for that particular language. So yeah, but for now you can just start translating and you just join, you just join, uh, uh, make a request to join translation and you first translate and um, then probably what will happen is that you or some other more experienced translator can check how it goes and I'm sure it will be like great, but then uh, we don't, first we give translator access and then reviewer access a little uh, later if you're interested and yeah, if you have uh, kind of shown yourself to be reliable and to, yeah. Aruna, do you, do you think it would be helpful to, to have like a point person for each language so that when new people come in, then they can just, mm -hmm. you know, you could, you could, they could, they could be directed to them and then kind of be brought up to speed and, and not overlap. Yeah, that's a great idea. Ideally, it would be the translators, most experienced translators. Uh, if they are interested in that, of course, that would be great. Uh, I would have to talk to like all of them. Some teams have only one translator. So I right. think what I can do is we, we need to kind of figure out which translators are kind of active and then maybe ask them, reach out to them. It depends. Some translators are active at some point and then at the other point. I think I should know this. I will keep track of all the translators who are being who are active and communicate with them. And then people can always reach out to me for any questions. And yeah, then uh, it will be easier after a while. People will figure out, oh yeah, this is the same translator, consistent translator, and then I can talk to them. It would be cool if we could have like on the Keybase channel, have like in the, the headline for the channel, just have like all the handles of all the people for that are the point people for each language. So like, like Wiz okay. Japanese, Fabio, PTBR, and yeah. so people immediately know That's on the great. channel who I should Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. That's great. So uh, I'm not sure if I have time to just do a quick summary. We've got 30 uh, seconds. Okay. So uh, <laughs> number one, we'll discuss the core languages. We'll uh, make a list. Uh, so the next release, please uh, uh, try to do as much translation as you can for the next release next week. And um, we will provide more information for what uh, information to translate for the website and <laughs> many other things. We'll keep you posted. Uh, now we are on Keybase primarily, but I will post major announcements still on 